Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to have a little chat about a weird pricing inconsistency. I know what you're thinking. Games Workshop, pricing inconsistency? Surely not. Surely that's not a thing that can happen. Well, occasionally, occasionally it does. And uh, yes, you are absolutely correct. That was all sarcasm. It feels like it's been a weird week for pricing inconsistencies. I assumed the Void Dragon would be more expensive than it was. I assumed the Monolith would be cheaper than it was. And I didn't think that the Mega Gargant would be 120 quid because it's the same size as an Imperial Knight. And Imperial Knights are nowhere near 100... Well, I say nowhere near. They're not 120 quid. Then again, a Chaos Knight is 95 quid, which is more expensive than a standard Imperial Knight, even though it technically has fewer options. So actually... Who really knows? But there is a brand new example of who really knows. Now, we're talking about this mostly because you guys have been asking me about this a lot over the last, like, 24 hours. Um, and I'll give you this one. This one's weird and doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but we're going to try and maybe come up with an explanation as to why this particular inconsistency exists in the first place. So, you want to buy some Necron Warriors. You want 10 Warriors with their three Scarab Lad base scarab scarab bases bases of scarabs 29 pounds now in isolation 29 pounds for a troops choice how is that how is that well it's not bad primaris intercessors 35 quid if we uh take a look at sisters battle sister squad 35 pounds sister silent squad is 50 quid so compared to that positively an absolute steal if you want to look at a bit more in the way of uh, space marine examples Vanguard Veteran Squad, 30 quid. Assault Squad, 30 quid. Eliminators, 30 quid. Tactical Squid, th Tactical Squid? Tactical Squad, 30 quid. You get the idea. There's a very consistent uh, set of pricing going on there, which is somewhat helpful for us. So back to the Warriors, £29 for a Troops Choice. That is not bad. That is passable. It's not the worst price we've ever seen in our lives, let's be honest, is it? Why then could you, if you wanted to, spend an extra £3.50 and get those same 10 push-fit warriors with the three bases of scarabs and a royal warden and a, uh, a blade guard lieutenant and five assault intercessors. Why? Answers on the back of a postcard. Let's see what you come up with. Alternatively, you could just leave your explanation in the comments down below. And of course, the explanation could just be because because GW, because what? What is even happening? We don't know. Now, I don't have a great explanation for this. It would be nice if I did. It would be really handy if I did. The only thing I've got is that, frankly, this is just an example of two different but similar products being in two completely different pricing systems. So when it comes to 40k, if you look at the way that prices are done, it's it, on the surface, it looks kind of weird, but there is a pattern. You only need say one or two hqs and so an hq model your primaris captain for instance is 22 pounds 50. that is one model for 22 50. you need a couple of different troops choices and those are usually 10 models and they are between 25 and 35 pounds then you look at things like elite choices or fast attack they are anywhere between three to five models per box but they cost the same as troops you need fewer of them there are fewer models but the cost is higher. That's generally how it seems to work. Troops choices, generally, they tend to be the best value. In terms of what you get in the box, in terms of just sheer material within the packaging, troops choices are up there in terms of value for money. Comparative value for money, obviously. HQs are the, the worst for that because, you know, some of them are really expensive and you only get a single model and sometimes not even with any options. The thing is that the things like Recruit Edition, the Elite Edition, and Commander Edition, the starter sets, they're not placed in that same hierarchy. They're not like priced similarly to the rest of the catalogue. There's deviation from the way that Games Workshop prices stuff in the starter sets. So if you look at like Start Collecting... Well, I mean, we'll stick with Primaris as the example because we've got the Assault Intercessors in the Recruit Edition box. So the Space Wolves one... That is 10 intercessors, that's a battle leader, and that's 3 aggressors. So, that is 60 quid. But the intercessors are 35, the aggressors are 30, and the battle leader, I believe, is 20 to 22. So you're saving money there. You are definitely saving money. Saving a good 20, 30 quid, maybe a little bit more. 
that's not bad. And it's not bad because it's supposed to entice you into starting that force. It provides a discount when you get into that particular army. It provides a easy, solid base for building your force up from there. The thing is, the starter sets, the Recruit Edition, the Elite Edition, and the Command Edition, those are all designed to be kind of similar to that, but like massively boosted. There is a huge amount of value for money because you want to get people in and hooked. If someone buys the Recruit Edition, you want them to then look at that and go, oh, okay, well, I've got these. I need some intercessors now. Now, they could do a start collecting, which would still be cheaper than buying all this stuff separately, and they would end up with, you know, an okay force. And then they want to expand it again, and that's where they start to have to look at things outside of those discounted options. They have to look at things like Repulsor Executioners, which are like 50 to 55 quid. You start expanding out of one kind of pricing system and into another. The thing is, in this specific case, the two pricing systems are so completely incongruous. So you've got a troops choice for 29 quid, which is absolutely standard. I assume that when we see the assault intercessors, those will be about 30 to 35 pounds. I'd be shocked if they were if they were less than that. I mean, a current assault squad is the same cost as a tactical squad. They're probably going to stick with the same thing for the primary stuff. Um which, of course, will mean that this box is still really good value. But it's because you've got this one way of doing things, this one set of prices and this one way of pricing things, and then on the other side of things, you've got this essentially different product line made up of exactly the same products. That's why it feels so weird, because these starter sets are designed to be as like lucrative as possible. They are as heavily discounted as they can make them. Because the whole point is that, you know, the plastic crack gets its claws into you and you want more. You enjoy it. You want to fill out these armies. You want to play more. You want to buy more. You have this nice, easy route where you go from the starter sets to expanding out with things like start collecting. And then suddenly you're out in no man's land and you're having to build a list that's got two Redemptors in it. And the Redemptors are £35 each. And... The heady days of getting 20 models for £32.50 are far behind you because you don't need those models right now. You need something else. But because they're next to each other and they contain exactly the same models <laughs> across both, across the two, like the £29 box of Necron Warriors and the Recruit Edition, it just makes it look like their pricing system makes no sense. Those are my best guesses, anyway, as to what this particular weird pricing thing is. If you have any ideas, I mean, your idea might just be incompetence, uh, which, who knows? But, yeah, let me know in the comments down below why you reckon this particular one stands out so much and what you reckon the thinking might have been behind it. Different markets, almost different targets at the very least. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like it. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Anime Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.